Hey you guys, what's up? Uh, Charlie here, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. Uh, I am trying to complete a bunch of different contracts at once and I wanted to show you guys sort of what I came up with with this. I know I said I was gonna do this off camera, but it's a really quick video anyway. So I've got a uh, stack decoupler here, 2.5. I've got the Terrier engine. I've got the test, the radial decoupler landed. And I've also got the hull, the Separatron nose cone into flight. And this thing is massive. It's just huge, it's ridiculous. This is the size of my tiny probe. And this is the size of this nose cone. It's pretty big. So uh, how do I test all this stuff? Well, the test is we need to test, we need to test this stack decoupler splash down. Okay, so that's this was this is with us. I also need to have the terrier and test that terrier engine, which is the same thing that's in that satellite uh, that we have launched already. Uh, that terrier engine is here, and I need to test it. Um, actually, let's move this down a bit. I don't need to have this quite so high. Although, if I start higher, I wonder what happens if I start up here. That is technically giving me a head start, right? <laughs> No, I think it's probably unstable, I'm not sure. We'll just leave it the way it is, it's fine, whatever. Um, the Terrier engine needs to be tested at while landed, so we're landed on the launch pad, that counts. Um, I also need to test the radial decoupler landed. Uh, now this radial decoupler is this one here. So I've got just one of them just sitting here on the side. And uh, then the last thing is hauling this nose cone. So what this is gonna do, what we're gonna do is, the first thing that's gonna happen is we're gonna, we're gonna eject this, or we're gonna trigger this, and that's gonna be the test that's landed. Then when I launch the rocket, uh, we'll have it basically launch. The Terrier will be, um, I wonder if I actually have to be touching the ground. Does it count? Oh, let's just put this down to where I'm down like that. Let's just do that. I don't know if that's required, but I'm gonna do it. Um, so then we're gonna fire the Terrier engine and then the, and these. Uh, yeah, so actually let's move this to another Terrier will fire first then we'll fire the rocket boosters here and release the clamps and Hopefully this will get us to the right altitude because the space Y Separatron nose cone needs to be 33,000 meters in the air So that's why we have the boosters to hopefully get us to 33,000 meters. It may not work um, Actually, I also need this antenna don't I? That's kind of important I need to be able to control it. Um, I'm hoping that these these boosters will get us that high. I don't know if it will, but I'm hoping it will. Uh, so I guess let's try this out and see what happens. All right, so we've got a really goofy looking rocket. And the first thing we're gonna do is eject this, which is gonna satisfy this contract. Where is it? The decoupler here, it'll satisfy this one. Boom, done. So just eject that. And some, for some reason it explodes, because that's Kerbal Space Program, everything explodes. Um, then we're gonna go ahead and launch the Terrier. Hopefully that gets this contract satisfied. Cool, it does. And we'll turn the thrust all the way up and launch the clamps and away we go. Now hope is that this will get us to 33,000 meters. I really hope it does, but I don't think it will based on how fast it's currently accelerating. I don't think it will. I think I need more. I think I'm going to need more boosters. Uh, also, we're not quite stable. I'm not about to tip over, I think. Oh, yeah. Oh, we're about to tip over. Yep. Okay. Surprising how we're somewhat straight, but not really straight. So let's go back to vehicle assembly. I need more boosters. Like, that. that's, that's got to happen. So uh, let's zoom in a bit. I wish there was a... There was a faster way to zoom in. Isn't that like the plus sign or something? Isn't that normally how people zoom in? I don't know. I just have to do it with the mouse, so whatever. Um, I'm gonna copy this and put a copy of it like that. And then we'll take this and put this. Um, no. Just put that there. All right, so hopefully with having that many boosters, uh, I'm gonna turn the thrust back up, I think, too, just a little bit, so. Uh, 72 and 72. There. Okay, so hopefully that helps us a little bit more. 
but I also need to be able to keep this thing straight because it's going to tip over. So we're going to need wings. So let's just put the winglets on. That should keep it fairly straight. Um, and then just because I might need wings down in this one too. So we'll put that there. All right, let's try that out. Make sure our staging is still right. Yeah, it is. Okay. And then we do camp. Yeah, okay, that's good. Let's launch that, see what that does. First things first, off goes that, explosion, cool. And then uh, we'll just test the engine, done. And then SAS on, up we go, and wow, it immediately just kicks to one side. That was weird. Oh man, I managed to get control of it, kinda. Oh, all right, get, get, get under control here, here we go. Okay, now we're a little bit more under control. We need to get up to 33,000 meters. That's where we need to get. Going through the clouds. Get those off. Now we're going to start slowing down, but I have a terrier still. I'm hoping the terrier um, will help us with not slowing down too fast. We are slowing down. You can see our surface speed is decreasing. But I think the Terrier is helping us a little bit with slowing down that rate of decrease. Need to get to 33,000 meters and then this guy's contract is satisfied. And I think we did it. Oh yeah, we did it. Piece of cake. All right, let's just kill that engine. Don't need to be any higher. And there we go. Satisfied. We are satisfied. Okay, so now it's all about coming back down and getting splashed down in the in the water, which I don't think will be too much of a problem for us, but let's just kind of give ourselves a quick nudge. That was too easy, actually. We're, we're much higher than we need to be. Cool. So let's just get ourselves turned this way, just to make sure we're in the water. And then it's all about falling back down to the surface. A little bit of time acceleration. It's fine if we start to tip ourselves back down. That's fine with me. Don't much care. Slow our descent a bit, maybe. That might be. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, whoa. Okay, hold on. Kill the engine. We're going too fast. Gotta slow down. I said kill the engine. Why is it still firing? Oh no, we're too heavy, and we're speeding up, and I, I totally said to kill the engine. Oh crap, we're going too fast, uh, we're going to crash and burn. All right, you guys, so what happened was essentially we ran out of electric power, and that's why I couldn't do anything with my engine, I couldn't throttle the engine down, I couldn't control it, I was in a nosedive, all that stuff. Um, let's go ahead and do this. And off it goes. Cool. Then we'll uh, throttle up, engage the Terrier, activate, oh, and steer it in the proper direction. Up this goes, up this goes, up this goes. We're going really, really fast now. All right, and we just get rid of them. Dead weight. They hit each other, and that's fine. And we're up. So I've added this big 1000K battery to make sure that we don't run out of power because by default, we have just a mere 10 charge. And now we have 1010, so we're not gonna run out of charge now. And you can see that we're using a little bit of charge. So it's not much, but it's enough. And it's enough to apparently make us run out of power right at the last minute. So now we don't have that problem. And I'll just kill the engine. I want to turn it. I don't want to go too high because then I'll just be going too fast. So let's turn ourselves around facing down. And we will fire the engine. 
That should slow our rate of descent pretty quickly. Firing back down towards the earth. All right, and then I'll just rotate myself back around and kill the engine. Now, you might be saying to yourself, why in the world do you want to flip around? And the answer is, uh, so that I don't get pointed straight down with the nose cone again. I want to use the air resistance as I fall to help me slow down. And so spinning uh, allows me to do that because last time I had that problem. The only worry I have is that this probe is gonna come disconnected as a weak point. I don't think that's a concern. If I had FAR installed, if we had Ferrum Aerospace Research installed, that would definitely be a concern. Okay, so now I'm going to try and stop my spin. Uh, just enough to where I can control my rate of descent like this. Now eventually this is gonna flip over. Oh, oh, not yet though, hopefully. So we are moving back down towards the planet now. We're accelerating, but I've got this, I got this Terrier engine sort of controlling our rate of descent. Eventually it will not be able to control it. Let's just get it going a little bit faster. I don't have all day here. And right about now, you can see the charge. Well, 1,000 out of 110 out of 1,000 here. Right about now is the time where we would run out of power, electric power. But we're not because of the extra battery now. So I'm just trying to keep myself starting to spin, getting a little out of control now. Atmosphere's getting thicker. Having a harder time keeping it straight up. I'll kill the engine and down we go now there's nothing I can do about it now but the good news is um, we're not falling too fast for parachutes so let's just go ahead and release those now and I also decided to take this opportunity to go a little bit lighter on to go a little bit lighter on the parachutes so I don't have quite as many parachutes this time I don't think it'll be that big of a problem. And if it is, then I'll just fire the Terrier back up and we'll slow ourselves down that way. And okay, let the thing settle down. Looks like it's gonna be about four meters per second. Not bad. Let's go ahead and and we're fairly close to KSC, and not quite as close as I'd like to be, but it's still close enough, so it'll be fine. We're about, how far away are we? Can't quite read that number, it's text is too light. About 14 kilometers, not that bad. We'll recover most of the value of this craft, so that's good. Okay, so blah, 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 blah. Down we go, down we go. And we'll disengage the time acceleration. Fire the Terrier back up. Oh, shut down the engine. And now we're in the water. Yay, and we're safe. And now, hopefully, I can test this Separatron because that's the last thing or not Separatron, but the stack decoupler. So test it. Oh, I am out of, no way, I still don't have a signal. Why don't I have a signal? Is it just because I'm in the water? Maybe it's because I'm in the water. I mean, I was out of charge last time, right? We, we did see that. This is, this is 984, we lost 10 charge, but I, I don't have connection to this. Damn. All right. I mean, like if I lose connection to it the moment I hit the water, that sucks. Well, whatever, it is what it is. Recover the vessel. So now you can see some of the trial and error that, and I mean, maybe these things are cool to watch, but I, I'd, I'd rather like just not have videos like this all the time. But look, we have 634,000 credits, 97 science. 97 science means we can unlock something else that's interesting and fun. But I will leave that for the next video. I am going to do this though, because we should. 
upgrade this. 451,000 credits to upgrade our research and development center. This will unlock, uh, we can do up to 500 science limit instead of 100, which is good. Also, our Kerbals can now do a surface samples uh, for science, which is great. And we can now, we now have, have the ability to uh, engineer components and engineer our crafts to be able to uh, transfer resources around. So I can move fuel, for example, from one tank to another, etc. Okay, so let's upgrade that. A lot more facilities now. Looks kind of nice. And we're left with 183,000 left. Now this is already upgraded. This is upgraded. The only thing left to upgrade them would be the space plane hangar. Uh, and I don't have enough money to do that now. But I will after the next episode. Uh, I haven't shown you the administration building yet. So let's do that because this video is not that long. So this is the administration building and this is sort of where the suits live. Uh, there's finances, science, public relations, and operations, and you can take part in some strategies. You can take part in certain types of projects here that will uh, basically help you in other ways. So for example, we do a fundraising campaign. Um, this will cost us seven of our reputation, so you can spend your reputation for fundraising. Um, and it will basically take 5% of all the reputation points we gain as we go through things, um, but it will yield 1,000 funds for each unit of reputation that it costs us. Um, so that's pretty good. And I can also in increase this. I can do a 5% commitment, or I can choose to do a 25% commitment, a 20% commitment, etc. And this is basically the more resources I commit to it. So for example, if I say, uh, take 20% of my reputation gains on missions, um, I'm more likely to get more funds for that because it's more likely to take take more units of reputation. Uh, so that's one way I can make some money that way. Uh, I can also do science. We can do unpaid research program. Uh, so we can uh, undergrad researchers. We can bring in some people from the, the local college, give them some credits and stuff like that. 5% um, reputation gains. I can take 5% of my reputation gains and instead I'll get one science for each 2.556 reputation. Or I can increase the limit again to like 25 and now 2.4. So I get more science. Or I get one science for less reputation now because there's more commitment to it. Um, and it takes more reputation gains away from me. Uh, so it's all sorts of stuff. We can do outsource R&D. We, um, you know, we can spend some funds and uh, get science for every 12,000 funds we spend. There's all sorts of things we can do there. And upgrading the administration building allows me to do, uh, right now the maximum commitment is 25%, and we can do effectively one strategy at a time. If I upgrade it, uh, we can do up to 60%, and we can have three strategies at a time. And what's really cool about the administration building, especially in the later game, is once we get research and development to the point where we've unlocked almost every technology that we need in order to fulfill our goal, uh, fulfill our goal, I can't even say that word, fulfill, um, once we unlock all of the research projects, we effectively don't really have a need for science anymore. We've unlocked everything or we're getting close to unlocking everything. So I can then have the administration come in and have our science 100% committed towards projects that will get us more funds. And then we can use those funds to build more satellites, build more ships, whatever, and, and ultimately fulfill our goal. So that's one thing that's really cool about that. And at, at that point, we probably won't need reputation either. So if we do have any contracts lingering at that point, uh, we can go ahead and have reputation applied towards funds as well. Because ultimately funds are what is going to restrict us in the late game. Science is gonna restrict us in the early game. So that's, I'm really trying to get more science now. And then later on, we'll need more funds. Because some of these crafts that we're gonna build might cost a million or two. Uh, if, they're, if they're big enough, um, you know, a, a, an orbital station around a, a distant planet could easily cost a million to build. Um, so we have science data from the surface of Minmus. This is one of our contracts we have now, and we're totally going to take that because I want it. Uh, we also have test the skipper liquid fuel engine splash down at Kerbin. That's a piece of cake. Easy to do. And test the Whirligig turboprop. Uh, oh, we have a rescue mission. Oh, here we go. Rescue Rosalind Kerman from orbit of Kerbin. So, so this person here is stranded. She's orbiting Kerbin. She needs our help to get home safely and we can rescue her. Oh yeah, I love those. Um, 
This is readings from the surface, uh, more things I can do for my plane, and conduct an orbital survey of Kerbin uh, in flight. Oh, these are all, we can do all of these. Okay, since I can do all of them, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna upgrade mission control. Uh, oh, I just can't quite. Maybe if I get enough, if I get enough of a, of a bonus or an advance. This is a $65,000 advance right here. So let's take the Explore the Moon. Uh, nope, here. That gives us an advance that's 287,000. Now we have enough to unlock the Mission Control. And now we have, uh, Mission Control is now fully upgraded. And because of that, I can accept unlimited contracts. So let's take them all. I can do all of these right now. So let's just do them all. And now we have 92,000 credits because we got an advance. Each one of these comes with an advance of funds. So $40,000 advance, $19,000 advance, etc. So I got all sorts of stuff to do, including a rescue mission, which is always fun. But I won't be able to do, do the rescue mission. Um, well, I, I can. I can do it with a probe. It's just harder to do with a probe because I don't have a satellite network up. So we're really, really pushing. I really got to push for our satellite network to get up and running. Um, which is going to require better solar panels for sure. And I just don't have them right now. So, yeah. These are cool and all. Like this one here, these are cool and all. But they're not what I, they're not really what I need, need. I think they'll do though. Once, if I, if I can unlock these for 160 science, I think they'll do. And so our mission to Minmus that we're going to be doing in the next episode, uh, when we actually go to Minmus with a Kerbal um, and actually do some science and stuff, um, and, and land on the planet, uh, that will, when we return, we'll have enough science easily to uh, be able to unlock the stuff that we need, hopefully, to do our satellite network and finally get that up and running because that is the number one thing we're going to need is a good satellite network to fulfill our goal. But guys, thanks for watching. See you in the next episode. Bye.